for having me in your office, Dev. Well, thank you for coming out. Yeah. Made it all the way. Can you tell me of where we are, actually, yeah. to give context? So right now we're in the, uh, the new HQ for Miro, which is a, a historic building in the city center of uh, Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. We're still under construction, <laughs> uh, planned to deliver on June 1st. So we're only three weeks away. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to kind of bring you here. As I think the, the natural light, all of the elements that we have in the building are quite, uh, quite amazing. It was really special for me to enter that building because it was under construction. Mm -hmm. And we've heard so many companies putting, a, putting their project on pause because they were afraid of what would be the future. Mm -hmm. So I'm so interested to hear from you how you felt the energy and the optimism to think that now we need to continue building and building a new inside that new site. Yeah, I think, I think for that to kind of go back to kind of where we came from as an organization. So we were born uh, pre-pandemic a uh, company of approximately 250 people coming out of pandemic uh, around 1500 people to date. Wow. So all of the growth has happened in the last yeah. two years. And so we needed to build and rebuild kind of office culture because that didn't really exist. It did in specific hubs. But for example, in Amsterdam, like offices had been empty for, uh, for a long time. So ramping up, building out the portfolio without a lot of utilization. Yeah. So now we needed to bring it to one space that is really kind of breathing uh, Miro as the brand uh, because we, we didn't have such a location yet and also from an HQ perspective. And do you, that's very interesting because as you said, there was almost no background. It's like almost starting mm -hmm. on a blank state. Do you find that they had a great remote culture because they had yeah. to grow without an office and is it benefiting this hybrid model or is it a disadvantage? I think like ultimately, like from a, from a platform perspective, I have to say it's going to be hybrid for sure. And it's, it's benefiting. I think it worked for us really well, but I think it definitely, if you don't have the kind of the in office um, experience, the problem will be that you are not able to kind of come together. There's not an awful lot of creativity going around between the teams. Um, ultimately, that face-to-face -face interaction needs to happen. And that's definitely something that a lot of employees lack in their experience. All yeah. people who join a new company, even if they knew offices before, yeah. they don't know what it is to be in an office with those particular colleagues. And because they don't know, they might not feel any desire. So how do you create that attraction to be together? Yeah, so we actually flipped it on its head. And so we said, okay, instead of going to traditional kind of office space, like many of my peers have a lot of office space and we didn't have as much, yeah. right? To kind of start, um, start off with. Um, what is, I think, unique about the way that we have approached it, we started out with the vision, bringing the virtual product, which is kind of really set up for success for hybrid meetings and bring it from virtual into physical environments. So what we're trying to build is in, uh, delivering the ultimate immersive hybrid collaboration experience in a building, really building a living lab, some, some, uh, a place where we're going to be kind of co-create and cross-collaborate between the different teams in order to um, create the best um, possible kind of uh, way of working. And the, um, the concept is built around having a heavy technology layer, understanding how people are kind of moving around in the building. And then on top of that, having the feedback loop to understand with the different teams like, how are you working? Is this working? Uh, what's not working? And how can we make that better? I think you really got me at the ultimate hybrid experience <laughs> because sadly, when people use hybrid, is to show like the kind of like the worst best scenario. Like, mm -hmm. oh, we're going to have to do hybrid, so we're going to make it work. But you're going for the opposite. You're going to make it the ultimate experience yep. because that remove the layers or the barriers between who is here, who is not, mm -hmm. who has access to information, who has not. Now we know everybody needs access to that information because everybody contributes to the success of its team, yeah. of the company and of the culture. Yeah, exactly. And also, um, as Miro starts to also kind of integrate with, with hardware, not starts, but like it's been integrating with hardware, like this should be our ultimate use case. Like on the ground floor in this building, you'll find our experience center where people are able to kind of test on different devices, but a customer or an employee or anyone else would visit the building, would be able to go up to any floor in this building 
and just uh, have that hybrid experience. And, and so obviously we're testing and piloting with different uh, technologies right now. Um, so we'll see what, what will come of that. But, exactly. Uh, so you are willing to take in the results. That's why you're using yeah. the, techno the data perspective. Because you're willing to look at the data on how it's used and who comes in. Exactly. So we're now partnering with, uh, with another technology platform that is mainly focused around kind of delivering that seamless experience for employees. Really kind of being able to kind of use an app to book your space yeah. um, and also to make suggestions to say, hey, um, your colleagues are sitting in this specific area. Do you want to be there too? Yeah. Um, have you had lunch yet? Like, do you want to book lunch? All of those little things, those that make the lives easier of an employee, yeah. that's what we're bringing online. Not for day one, but uh, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's in the process. And it's, it is forward thinking because we grew up or we grew up with that technology, then we learned to adopt technology, but maybe the next generation will come with this mindset that technology, technology should be to serve us. Yeah, exactly. Today we are more the, the victims of technology, the victims of social media, the yeah. victims of the addiction. The next advancement, the next evolution is how do we make it work for us? How does it suggest us when to go because there's no commute? Who is there? So I want to be there too. Yeah. What's happening? So I want to book. And that's where we shift our relationship. Yeah, exactly. No, I, and I, that's something I always kind of was thinking about, but like, how do you bring that? And I think the ultimate case now for Miro is like, okay, I have a blank slate. Now we can just start and do it right from the, from the start. Yeah. And really kind of build that excitement, bring people in, let people kind of use it, be able to kind of shift, um, shift furniture around whenever we need to. Mm -hmm. um, and when you think about kind of the concept for Miro, 60% is around collaboration and 40% is only heads down space. So either a physical desk or kind of a phone booth. So that 60% collaboration is different, all the different kind of setups that you can think about in the space. But then how are they using it? Uh, are they using it? Are they not using it? So that's why we want to learn. And, and ultimately also when you bring in the Miro technology in the rooms, say, okay, uh, now we have been learning this, we can do case studies and be able to kind of present out different uh, white papers yeah. on the success of, uh, of hybrid work. You talked about something also very interesting. You talked about the blank state because there was very few, there was less people and, mm -hmm. and few offices. Were you able to go inside yourself also through the blank state? Because you come from another company mm -hmm. and we come with that identity when we start a new job. Were you able to shed it away? How did you adopt the mirror sculpture? It's, it's actually quite interesting because uh, when I left my previous company, I was, I was gravitating towards an entirely different direction. Okay. So I still was running real estate, uh, but I um, was uh, more gravitating towards sustainability, building a sustainability practice, yeah. having a totally different lens on how we do things as kind of a company and also have a different uh, opinion on real estate. Because one thing that Bob was kind of bothered me around what we did at real estate, like there's always when we had an issue, oh, real estate is the fix. Yeah. And I sincerely don't believe that real estate is always the fix. I think it's about how we use the space. Yeah. Um, that is kind of, uh, that, that's kind of where we can find the solution. But now also coming into a new organization saying, okay, guys, we need to also think about sustainability as an element. Why are we buying so many things? Why are we building so many things? Is there a way that we can do it on subscription basis? Like furniture as a service, uh, bringing in uh, different kind of bio-based materials, bringing in recycled materials, really kind of think about circularity. So. And there's really an alignment with the density vision because I guess there's this idea that we can continue building when mm -hmm. the, the buildings are too old or not updated, but at the same time, we don't use them to the most exactly. efficient way. Yeah. So the idea of also having data is for us to circulate yeah. and reshare the spaces before we build a new. And that's where I find that people in our industry have more of a responsibility totally. than other. Like at some point I fell in love with remote. Obviously we were all remote and I fell in love. I thought, oh, we don't need building anymore, but they're here. Yeah. They are here. And because of us somehow, like we also were part of building those buildings. So we have that responsibility to understand, like we cannot just discard because mm -hmm. they're here. So how do we transform it and how exactly. do we bring value? 
Yeah, I think for, for us, like ultimately, because we didn't have any office culture, we didn't have any ability to actually bring people together. Now we have that. And now as we learn, we also can understand and figure out the remote parts. Like mm -hmm. how does that distributed team kind of truly work? And can we add additional functions into office space, which makes it even more interesting for yeah. people to kind of come back. So instead of that push motion, let's try and create a pull motion Amazing. So using the attractiveness exactly. of the place, of the community. Yeah. Like ultimately what? we are as professionals exactly. are here for employees, right? We build the experience. Like why do you not want people to come back? Yeah. Do you find that we need also to like acquire the skills that hotels, restaurants, bar, yoga studio have to attract clients somehow we need to attract our members yeah i think like hospitality ultimately was something that we started a couple of years ago in the industry yeah right everything hospitality focus uh moving from receptionist to lobby ambassadors yeah. to really good i think that's that's kind of where it started four or five years ago uh and now that transition is is going i think beyond um, when you want to facilitate uh remote work when you facilitate kind of hybrid um, you will get more action between different offices. So is there a way that we combine functions? Um, so having hospitality mixed with real estate, mixed with other types of services. Yeah. Like even like here at Miro One, like we are on the canal in Amsterdam. We're like, okay, so normally you do a meeting uh, in a meeting room or whether that's kind of enclosed or open. What, why are we not doing it on a boat? Yeah. <laughs> so we're experimenting now to have people kind of do round kind of sessions on a boat yeah. to have a different, different environment, a different experience, more focused on the hospitality, bringing in the foods, the drinks. The, um, yeah, it's more, I, I would almost say kind of white cloth kind of service. Exactly. And that connection with the local environment, as totally. you mentioned, like let's also acknowledge that this office, this building is part of an environment. Yeah. What is there around? There's a canal, there's bike. Like, how big is going to be your bike room in this office? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, it's like, this is the perfect thing about answer, right? You can park exactly. your bike anywhere. Just make sure it's locked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you need to acknowledge where it's happening. Yeah. And in San Francisco, there was a little bit of this. Like, companies were building their top floors, were also renovating the ground floor and making some neighborhoods more accessible or kind of retail, right? There's other companies that I know of that are now experimenting with retail. So also it's not only about kind of having a different kind of environment for your employees, yeah. but also for your customers. Like you want to push your employer, employer brand to be broader than only your business to business, for example, yeah. but you want that name also to be there within the, the community that you yeah. kind of uh, have your office in. What, maybe that would be one of the last questions, what, how have you been able to put into words that idea of co-working, co-living, what is the concept? I think the ultimate case was like, we want to create thriving hubs, like a place where really kind of everyone is working together, creating that buzz, we want to make sure that people are like engaged. Yeah. I think it's all about engagement after all yeah. like because if you're going to bring them in an environment you're not communicating about the environment you're not communicating about your events like what's the added value exactly and i think there's still a lot of offices around the globe where you would walk in and it's like okay well nobody's welcoming me yeah there's nobody's like there's there's no place where i can find information um wayfinding is off exactly and that all needs to in order to create that thriving hub uh you need all those different elements and the worst experience for us, definitely in our generation, is the FOMO part. Yeah. If I, if I hear about it even after it happened, I will feel angry. Yeah. Especially if I could have made it. Yeah. So we need to remove that part and really be open about what's happening. Totally. And you talk about the different offices. Also show what's happening in other offices because yeah. people might decide to travel. So employees at Miro can access all offices freely. Yeah, freely. Still, there's no boundaries. Obviously, we're still heavily leaning on flex providers right now. Mm -hmm. So Miro One is going to be the flagship store. Nice. Uh, and then as we continue to grow, we're now building our three year kind of roadmap as to like, okay, what are the next steps? What are those next offices that we uh, are going to be building the same? So the next big one is, is going to be in Austin in Texas, wow. where we're actually taking already learnings from what we have learned here 
uh, and bring that into the new space. But we're pulling the same concept, we're working with different flex providers to understand like what can you provide in your space that will feel like uh, what we do here at Mira One. So we want to have a unified experience across the globe, obviously localized, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's what we're, what we're I doing. I love it and I'm excited to visit this office yeah. in June and the one in Austin. When do you think you will open it? Yeah, that's still uh, a TBD. We're <laughs> TBD. working on the plans right now, but uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll have some uh, better clarity in the in the near term. Uh, but mm -hmm. that's going to be an amazing office space, also a very unique building amazing. we've chosen. Thank you so much, Def. It Thank was you. such a lovely conversation. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>